T-minus one minute will come again to the launch of FUSAT on 2MF heavy configuration. At this point all systems are go. FUSAT will provide space stuff to Kerbin. This is the maiden flight of 2MF. It will attempt to return both its boosters and the core to the KSC. T minus 30 seconds, at this point still all systems are go. The boosters and the first stage are virtually identical. They have 9 engines, 5 LVT45 and 4 LVT30 to allow for gimbaling but enough thrust. T minus 10 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition and lift off of FUSAT on 2MF in its heavy configuration. As you can see, the core booster immediately throttled down to allow to continue further than the boosters who will decouple much earlier in the flight. The rocket is completely autonomously controlled by some KOS scripts, such as a KOS core and a probe core and some batteries on each stage. The script you are mainly seeing right now is the ascent script. It is using an exponential function of the altitude of the rocket to determine the optimal pitch angle for the rocket at this point. The rocket is being controlled from the first stage right now. All the other computers are already running, but they are waiting for the toggle of action group 5 for the boosters and action group 6 for the second stage to be activated shortly before separation. The rocket just passed through max Q, which is the point of maximum dynamic pressure on the vessel. It is about 8 km in altitude. Coming up on booster separation in just 20 seconds now. This will also be the point of the maximum acceleration of the rocket and the satellite. Just 10 seconds to booster separation. The core stage will be throttled up and the booster engines cut. They will then float for about 2 seconds parallel to the booster to ensure a safe separation. And separation. The boosters will now pitch apart to not collide on their way down. They will then just perform a turnaround until they are stabilized in about 20 seconds. In the bottom left you can see a separate booster cam that are tracking the boosters and not the rest of the rocket. Core separation and booster reignition in just a second. The core separated and the booster ignited. The core cam is in the bottom right. It will perform exactly the same maneuvers as the boosters, just the boost back will be a little bit longer. You can see the boosters at the bottom left which are already reversed and cut the engine now. The second stage is using a single REI5 skipper liquid engine. This will be the only engine on the whole launch vehicle to not be reused. First stage reignition also started. We are now switching to a simulated view of the second stage because our tracking cameras will not be able to resolve this image any further. This will provide some more information to you which you were not able to see previously, like for example the payload bearing or details on the satellite. The core just shut down its engine. Both it and the boosters will float back until they are just above the landing area and then perform a braking burn while the second stage will just continue to burn for a few minutes longer. Booster braking burn has just started, they are already right above the landing area. This is a little bit less fuel efficient than a direct landing, but it ensures much more precision when aiming at the landing site. The boosters already stopped and they are now falling straight down at the landing site. They already deployed the air brakes to reduce less fuel for braking, and have more control over the precise landing spot. They are falling straight towards the respective landing spots which are just 10 meters apart. 
The core braking burn is about to begin just a few seconds before the touchdown of the boosters. Cell will use a near suicide burn to be maximum fuel efficient and just hover the last few meters to land precisely at the landing spot. Core braking burn has started. Booster ignition! All engines are firing, they're burning all the remaining fuel, just hovering above the landing spot now. Core braking burn has stopped. Touchdown of booster number one. And touchdown of booster number two. Both boosters have safely returned to the Kerbal Space Center on Kerbin, while the first stage is still plummeting towards the ground. The second stage is experiencing a lot of heating, but its engine is about to shut down. Second engine cut off. Coming up on core reignition. All nine engines are lit. It is performing exactly the same maneuver as the two boosters. It is now just hovering above the launch pad where it started from. Touchdown of Fuset's 2MF heavy core directly on the launch pad. All three components have safely been returned to the Kerbal Space Center. The second stage is now floating up to the edge of the atmosphere at 70 km where it will separate its fairings and begins the first step of spacecraft activation by toggling Action Group 1. After that we will enter a short break and video back at Apple Apsis where the second stage will reignite. Fairing separation confirmed. Welcome back to the launch of Fuset on 2MF Heavy. We are just coming up on second stage free ignition. Ignition confirmed. This will just be a short burn due to the shallow ascent profile. Second stage cutoff. Spacecraft separation. Shortly before set the second stage toggle action group 2 to complete spacecraft activation. Fuset safely placed into low curve in orbit. Solar panels and Comdish are safely deployed. The second stage will float free for a few seconds before performing an RCS turnaround. Turnaround has started. This will last a few seconds before it's stabilized and then it will boost away slowly from the satellite to not damage it during the deorbit burn. Second stage safety burn has started. It will send burn off all its remaining fuel during the deorbit burn. The orbit burn has started. This is the only stage to not be recovered, but we already saved over 96% of all engines and 85% of the tanks. And second stage has shut down. Due to the nature of this simulation, we will not be able to show you the destruction of the second stage, but we will show you a fast forwarded view of the descent. This will end the role of the 2MF heavy launch vehicle in the launch of Fusat. The 
satellite weighs about 15 tons, which is at the upper limit of 2MF heavy launch capacity. It will be able to launch small to medium interplanetary craft. In fact, FUSAT has the Delta V to transfer to Duna. With that, we thank you for watching the launch of FUSAT and we hope you will check out our future launches. Auf Wiedersehen!